just look at that beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Oh my, oh the crust on this, my friends. I mean, bruh, look at that. Hey guys, welcome back to Flooded with Flavour. Today, I've come armed. Yes, that's right. Today, we are cooking the holy grail of steak. We're cooking two two pound tomahawks that I got from Costco the other day. Now, these things are of an interesting quality. They weren't the most expensive tomahawks. Uh, as you can see, this one is kind of falling apart a little bit, so we're gonna butcher twine them up soon. But I'm just intrigued to see how they come out. I've actually never reversed seared a tomahawk on this pit before. So it's gonna be an interesting cook. We're gonna smoke them real low, and then we're gonna grill them real hot. It's gonna be a pretty fun time. So I say we waste no more time and jump into preparing these weapons of war right here. So because I said these tomahawks are kind of falling apart, as you can see there, there's a big cut into the bone, which is gonna make it pretty tough when we smoke them, because obviously when we smoke the meat, it gets more tender and it tends to pull away from the bone quite a bit. And we don't want the ribeye to fall off the tomahawk, because you know, the actual bone is what makes this the tomahawk. If you cut the bone shorter, you get a cowboy steak. And if you take the bone out, then you get a ribeye. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of butcher twine. Now, I'll be honest, I've not twined up a ribeye or hell, a tomahawk in a very long time. So this is gonna be quite experimental. We're gonna wrap it round the bone, I believe, and then round the outside of the meat around the fat. And then at the top, we're just gonna tie it in until it wraps nice and tight around the outside of the tomahawk. And then we're just gonna hit it with a regular old knot at the top to make sure that the twine doesn't come undone when we're smoking. Hit the excess twine with the old snip. And there we should be good to go with a nicely twined up tomahawk. So as per usual, when I'm smoking pretty much anything on this channel that's not sweet or of a very specific culinary style, I'm gonna be going in with my patented own made kind of all purpose rub, which really it's nothing crazy. I've not invented anything crazy here. I'm not Oppenheimer creating the atom bomb. All this is is four parts, 16 mesh ground black pepper, two parts kosher salt and two parts Lowry seasoning salt. Now, of course, because the tomahawk is a very, very, very big steak, we can hit this with a generous amount of rub. I am also rubbing this about two hours before I put it on the pit as well, because I want a lot of time for the salts and the Lowry's and obviously the kosher salt as well to really soak into the meat, pull out some color in it and make sure the inside of the of the steak is equally seasoned because if you go ahead and season this right before it goes in the pit, none of the salt's really gonna get pulled into the meat and you're gonna lose a lot of that salt flavor. I am also gonna be rubbing the old meat stick, the bone here, just cause I like how this looks when it's rubbed. I like it being kind of uniform in color and almost texture to the meat. Also makes some damn good gnawing at the end, let me tell you. So there we go, that's one nicely rubbed up and twined up tomahawk steak. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge now for maybe two hours and I'll report back when it's time to fire the pit up. So as you can see, two hours in the fridge later, we have a very beautiful and darkly colored tomahawk that all the salt has gone into the meat of. This is gonna taste so damn good when it's been on the pit for a while and grilled up. But before we do that, we gotta make a butter. So what I have here in a little foil basket is about half a stick of unsalted butter, emphasis on the unsalted, and then six or seven garlic cloves, seven. I can count pretty quick, don't you worry. And we're gonna go into that with an indiscriminate amount of parsley, sage, thyme, one shot of real strong Missouri corn whiskey, and then a bay leaf. Now, of course, typically you'd use rosemary and anything beef related, but of course, of all these today, I happen to be out of rosemary. So this little random concoction will have to do. Okay then, it's time for me to give you guys a little bit of a law lesson on charcoal. Let's look at the law behind the kind of charcoal that we're gonna be using today. I have here two different kinds of charcoal, a charcoal briquette and a piece of lump charcoal. And today we're gonna to be using lump charcoal. The reason for this is lump burns a lot faster, but a lot hotter. So lump, this stuff is perfect for grilling, perfect for hot and fast cooks. Whereas briquettes, these release their energy and their fuel a lot slower. So they're perfect for like longer cooks, like pork butts, briskets, beef ribs, any kind of long cook you're gonna be doing. It's a lot easier to manage your fire with briquettes. Typically, I use lump for both, but I'm sort of navigating towards using briquettes again at the moment because honestly, running a fire for a long time with lump is quite difficult. You tend to lose your cold bed quite a lot because the lump burns down really quick. Lump charcoal, this stuff is literally just pieces of wood that have been burnt down into coals. Whereas briquettes is essentially a pile of sawdust that's been compacted down into a perfectly uniform shape. So they're all around the same shape. They all burn the same speed and they release their fuel a lot slower. Uh, they're great, like I said, for long cooks. 
but thing of your charcoal, with lump charcoal, you get a much more natural wood taste, which is great for grilling. You can use either for either, like I said. I use lump quite a lot for doing long smokes, and I've used briquettes before for grilling, but today we're gonna be using lump because it's perfect for really hot and really fast grilling. We're gonna be getting a great sear on these tomahawks, and lump is gonna do that perfectly. So as you can see today, we're not doing anything fancy in the firebox. We're just gonna use a whole load of lit lump charcoal right in the base of the firebox. I'm gonna use maybe two or three logs for this smoke. I'm gonna stick one on to preheat in a second, but as soon as these coals are whited over on top, we're gonna get them in the firebox and begin the smoke. So because you want the pit quite low for the start of this cook around 225 to 250 Fahrenheit, I'm gonna go ahead and close the fire pit door a little bit and also close the dampener on the exhaust a decent amount as well. As we go through what should be a decently short cook, we can modify things here and there to get the temp that we, that we want, but doing it like that should bring our temps down quite low. I wanna get a lot of good smoke on these tomahawks right at the start before we sear them. I wanna really lock in that smoke flavor. As you can see, we have the biggest tomahawk closest to the fire. This one is a little bit thicker, but I think there's quite a bit more meat on this one. So I want this a little bit closer because obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook and that one is gonna smoke away behind it. We're also gonna stick on our compound butter right at the back. Let that butter melt down, let the mixture all come together. And then when it comes time to sear these bad boys, we're gonna be glazing them with that beautiful butter. The last thing I wanna do here is just probe both of these tomahawks so I know what temp they are. I'm gonna be pulling them from the pit at maybe 115 to 120 Fahrenheit so they can rest for a few minutes before we sear them. We're going for about 125 towards the end of the sear, which is gonna be, should be a perfect mid-rare. So we're gonna get these probes in and I'll see you when the meat is at a beautiful about, yeah, 120 I'd say. So about halfway through this cook right now, as you can see, the tomahawk that we put closer to the fire is running about 10 degrees hotter than the one that's obviously on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip them around. And my, oh my, these are looking pretty damn good. Let's take a look at this butter as well. Also looking very nice. So about an hour and a half later, we have the closest one to the fire probing a little, a little hot, about 125. This one, ooh, that is hot. This one is gonna be maybe a little bit on the hotter side, a little bit on the more well done side, but still should be pretty good. The other one is temping 116. So give it a little bit of time and we'll pull it off and get it wrapped and then we'll get the fire pit set up for searing. So this last tomahawk is probing around 117, 117, the halo number of course. So I thought I'd pull it here, get one that's maybe a little bit over and one that's a little bit under and then we're gonna fire the fire pit up. Right then, here we have the coal bed that we've used to smoke these tomahawks, and now we're gonna use that coal bed to sear them. Gonna try and do about 90 seconds per side here, but we're of course gonna lather each side in this butter that as you can see is really melted down now. It's a beautiful color, that is the whiskey butter. I don't actually have a brush on me right now, so I'm using a spatula, which is gonna be interesting, but it's gonna cause the flames, if you can see down there, to really come up and start kissing this tomahawk, which is exactly what we want. Okay, then, that's 90 seconds. Let's flip this bad boy over. Oh, ho, ho, look at that color. Oh, boy. Once again, lather some more of this butter on. This is about the most inconvenient way to <laughs> apply butter to a steak, but you know what? We'll make do. Don't forget the bone, of course. Now, I just probed this steak, and it's probing quite high, so you know what? I think it's had enough time in the fire right now. Let's pull this absolute beauty off. To be honest with you, even if that does end up being a little bit overdone. I mean, that just looks so beautiful. I ain't gonna be mad. Let's get the second one on. Get some good grill grate contact. And you know what, I think we're gonna ditch that spatula and just pour some of this butter on. That'll get those, oh, there we go, now we're talking. That is just pure ASMR. A steak over a roaring fire. You genuinely cannot beat that. Look at how the flames are kissing the meat. Let's flip this absolute beautiful piece of meat over. Look at those grill marks we're getting on there as well. Beautiful. And let's pour some more butter on. Whew. Now we're licking. The way the flames are licking that steak is just ASMR. Beautiful. Now that's enough uh, flame licking for today. Let's get this bad boy off and cut into it. So my friends, let's take a look at this bad boy first. This is the one that we slightly went for a lower temp on. This should be maybe 125 right now. Oh, perfect. Almost perfect. Okay, right then. I am very excited to cut into this bad boy. Let's... uh. Cup ourselves with a very sharp knife. Have one final look at this. Oh, just look at that. Beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Oh my. Let's get it off the bone. Oh, oh my God, it comes off so well. 
And that, my friends, how could you ever not season, or even worse, throw away the boon? Would you look at that? Oh, I also forgot to take the twine off. Let me just uh, undo that twine now. It seems like the twine actually did its job pretty well. It started to come off a little bit. Oh, the crust on this, my friends. Oh my, the crust. I don't know if you guys can hear this. In fact, you know what? That is a beautiful sound, so I say we waste no more time and go straight into it. Oh, oh my lord. You know, I should have brought a bigger knife with me. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We'll make do. This looks just gorgeous. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to blow my own horn for a sec. That to me looks like a perfect mid-rare. The fat looks so good. Oh my. I mean, come on. Come on. Look at that. The, the grill marks. The beautiful crust that we built with that whiskey garlic butter and the overall doneness. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Oh, you know what folks, I think it's time we get ready for this. So my friends, here we have a whiskey garlic butter smoked and then reverse seared over fire tomahawk. Let's uh, I mean it pulls apart so easily, but it, it doesn't just pull apart. I have to use a little bit of tension, but when I use that it comes so easily. Let's try this. Mmm. Oh my god. You know what? I love brisket. I love beef ribs. But there's just something about mid-rare beef that's been smoked. Nothing. And I mean nothing compares to that. You know folks, I gotta try some of this fatty bit as well. I don't know if you can see how beautiful. How do I focus this thing? Oh my. I mean, dude. 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 Mmm. You know what, folks, I it. I can't help but uh, cut up this one that was slightly overcooked. I'm gonna be very curious to see how this is because it was probing in some areas like a literally perfect 125, and then other areas about 130, 135. So it's gonna be interesting, but I mean, it just, even, it, you know what? I am a very, very big proponent of steak being done mid rare at the highest. I normally, to be honest with you, have mine blue, but I wasn't gonna do that for a video, maybe next time. But if you serve that to me, well done. I don't think I could complain. I really don't. So you know what? Let's cut into the middle of it. Oh, that is, oh my God. Okay, so maybe slightly more well done. I'll say that's more like medium, the medium, medium rare, but <sighs> you tell me right now, my friend watching this video, who's about to hit the like button and subscribe, would you turn that away at a steak restaurant? I mean, bruh, look at that. Oh my, I've got to go in for a bite. What a beautiful piece. Mm. Oh my God, that was unbelievably nice. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed that. That tomahawk is staring at me right now. I gotta go eat it. In fact, I think I might have to eat too. So uh, whilst I'm dual wielding these bones, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more. As always, tons more content coming over here on Flooded With Flavor. And I'll catch you in the next one, which is gonna be a very experimental brisket cook. I'll catch you in the next one. Oh. Oh my God, that is good. I need to eat that now.